There we go. All right, we'll start seeing people jump on. Good, good. And then let's, Facebook's been working with Zoom, so it's kind of yeah, nice. Yeah, it worked yesterday. I think like at first when they were adjusting to all the giving it away for free and stuff, that was when it right. slowed down. Yeah, it was, it was pretty bad, but it's been very consistent over the last few days. Let's see. As you guys are jumping in, just put in the chat box where you're from, what city, state. Oh, don't make me do my radio. Or country. <laughs> we got people from all over the, the world. Other day, the other day I was annoying. Uh, 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 oh, <laughs> hey, Kevin from Manchester, New Hampshire is joining us. How's it doing? How you going? How you doing, Kevin? We got Lisa from West Hartford, Connecticut. Long time listener, first time caller. And that's Love the energy. Love it. Love the energy. I did it. I did it like for an, I did it for like 10 minutes the other day because Tristan couldn't get it to work. Yeah. It was his worst nightmare. It was amazing. CRM in a new world. All right, here we go. Deanne spelled her name wrong. That's what she said. She spelled her oh. name wrong. There we go. News flash. All right, here we go, guys. Uh, as, as we start going, we'll see more participants on the webinar portion, but we're going to go live into the Facebook page and into the group. And then uh, Nick's going to do a, a couple of watch parties and then we'll get going. And hey, Lab Code agents, thanks for joining us. We'll be talking about working your CRM in a whole new world. And this is not talking about uh, Aladdin. I was so, just about to sing. About that, Nick. I good. was just about to sing. This is not a Disney themed CRM talk. Why? Why not? It might be. It might be. Guys, welcome Keith Hawkin from Top Producer. For those of you using Top Producer, awesome. Good for you. And obviously my business partner, Nick Baldwin. Thanks for joining us, buddy. He was doing, Nick, can you do that radio voice really quick as people are joining? Uh, welcome everybody to our top producer webinar. And we'll be taking the 100th caller and giving away $1,000 in top producer ad spend. Not really. We won't. We won't. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, Keith. I was just wondering. I, I, I missed that part. <laughs> this is my, this is where my mind goes now because top producer the initials are TP and TP yes. is what everybody needs right now. So maybe they'll, maybe they will tune in. Dude, uh, dude. That is awesome introduction right there. I love there it. There you go. There you go. Oh, let's, let's get right into it. Keith, uh, uh, you, what's your position over at Top Producer and what do you do there? Yeah, yeah. So awesome. Well, first off, thanks for having me, Tristan and Nick. Appreciate it. Uh, so I am uh, the senior director of sales uh, at Top Producer. I've been um, with the company actually and around the industry for almost 20 years now. Uh, pretty much grew up uh, in the real estate industry and uh, the CRM space. So been there a long time. Uh, so what I do there, I actually run all of sales for the whole company, for the Top Producer business. Oh, wow, dude. I love it. We went all the way to the top with this one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, not really. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We went yeah, all the absolutely. way to the bottom on this one. Dude. No, yeah, exactly. This is your no, opportunity just to just take credit for all of it. Yeah, yeah. no. It's so just, you it's, created it's, Top Producer. Is that right? Wow. You invented I, yeah, CRM. Wow. I didn't invent it, but I will say this. I, when I started at Top Producer, it was still on floppy disk. So that should tell you enough. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I remember that. All right. So anyway, enough horsing around, guys. There we go. I think we got enough people on. Uh, Keith, let's get going with this. You you run this CRM that has thousands of people on it. Yeah. What is the one thing that that you see is is very successful in how people are using it right now? Because of what we're seeing is uh, because we we have access to all these CRMs across the nation and the world. The world. Uh, we we're seeing most people are really focusing in on their approach with past clients and sphere. So what are you seeing? And then we'll get into okay. what Nick and I are seeing. Yeah, I, I would actually like to say one quick yeah, thing, ahead, Keith. You know what, hold on. Nick one. has something to say. Nick, go ahead. I want to say, I want to say, you never let me I'm talk. Just, I'm, That's I'm, why clearing, I I'm clearing the path for you. I'm clearing it for you. Here we go. So Tristan and I talk to a lot of top agents and teams around the country. And not, Tristan, I don't know if you've noticed this, but a lot of them, like the big one, a, a lot of the big teams, they actually use, they use Top Producer. 
Like a lot of them, like hundred million plus teams use yep. top producer. It's interesting. Like I, I think like the conversations that I'm having with CRM using, they go, we use top producer. I'm like, wow, like all the big ones, you know? Well, I it's think because cool. they were, they were first to. Yeah. There's to also a lot of cool features in top producers that a lot of CRMs don't have that they really like. Um, and we can get into that later, but um, it's interesting to me to find out just how many really top mega teams in our country and in our industry are using it. That's very true, man. Very true. Yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's a big part of that too is, is one, the product is powerful and it is beneficial to their business, but at the same time, we've been around a long time, right? I mean, I'm talking about the fact that I started when we were a floppy disk. You know, this top producer as a business started in 1982. We were like, and it started by two realtors, right? Oh, wow. And they were brothers and, and it was based on a need, right? And so that's kind of like where, you know, that came from. But back to like your, your question, Tristan, like it doesn't matter what CRM you use. Like right now, when you look at what's going on, in you know the world right it's not just you know north america it's this is worldwide is i don't think there's been a more important time in the industry that you need to have your contacts in one place right you yeah, need to have a system true. in place and that relationships right now are more important than ever before right yeah 100 percent. and that and and that's 100 percent what like we're about is like how do we help the industry build these long-standing beneficial relationships that are there long-term, not short-term. That's a good point. And so what are you seeing are some of the things that people are doing right now with their CRMs? Yeah, yeah. with their CRMs right now is, is my biggest one is, I think there's really two parts. One is I think you need to, before you even look at the CRM is educate yourself with the impact of COVID-19 in your long run, right? Really educate yourself on the impact that's having on um, the people in your database, right? And then the next thing is, reach out and say hi and check in. Like what our customers are doing right now is they're calling as many people as they can to check in on them and see how they can help them. Yeah. And even my own realtor, I mean, it's like we talk about this stuff and then when you see it in the real world, you know, my own realtor who we bought this place that I'm living in right now six years ago, he, checked, he sent a text to my wife yesterday. Hey, how's it going? That's Just checking awesome. in. Do you need anything? And I think when you think about wh what's going on right now, um, people are looking for people to talk to. Right. And I think the more times you can say hi, um, it's going to pay dividends in the future. Hey, can I mention something? Speaking of that. Yeah. So I did a webinar previously and, and uh, before this, and, the, and one of the guys said he's from New York, New York state. And, uh, you know, Cuomo really like threw the hammer down there. Not like not just um, shelter in place, but realtors aren't even allowed to cold call. Like they can't call for new business. Right. Right. And, and, and he's concerned about that. And, um, and I'm like, dude, I go, now is the time to pour into people that you know, you know, pour into your database, pour into your past clients and friends and family. You know, the fact that you can't cold call, it, it, it shouldn't even be a blip on your radar. Like be somebody to someone who might need you because that's going to leave a big impact like you just said, your agent from six years ago texted your wife to see how she was doing. That's a huge lasting impression. So that's the pivot we need to start doing now. Um, with companies like, like with, with companies that are like, uh, let me think, like, like Open Door, right, for instance. They're pulling back, right, uh, from buying homes. And so when you start seeing that, it's a, it's a complete window to opportunity uh, because because now as agents we can connect uh, with our with our with our current and past clients on a deeper level. Yeah, hundred percent agree with you. And and I would also add, you have their attention right now. They're listening, right? And right. you know, it's often you hear it's like, man, you know, I'm sure you guys hear it too. It's like, man, Keith, I've called like 50 people and no one wants to talk, right? Yeah. Now if you call 50 people, how many are you talking to? Well, it, right. it's a little higher, but what we're right. also noticing because we're doing this every day is that most people still want the text over right. over calling and i think you, you need to shift there as well uh, because they're with their families now they don't want to pick up a call they don't recognize it but the approach that we're taking is is a little softer and i know most people have shifted if not it's time to shift and the approach should be somewhere along the lines as uh, if you're calling your sphere it should be hey this is tristan with uh, keller williams realty we're reaching out to all of our friends and, and past clients, just to see how things are going. How are you, right? Yeah. And that's all. And just let them take it from there. It could even be softer than that. Hey, this is Tristan. 
just reaching out to see how you're doing uh, in, in this community, because this is where I live too, if they're close. And just let them talk. And if they say, great, I'm doing great. Uh, and then they start saying more things along the line, just shut up and listen if you're on the phone. Because a lot of people just need to be listened to right now. And yeah. they don't want to talk about real estate. What we are finding is though, the past clients and the sphere that we are reaching out to, they naturally bring up real estate uh, for the most part. What they're saying to us, the number one question is, well, Tristan, thanks for calling, man. Yeah, we're fine. Uh, but how, what, what's happening out there with real estate? How are buyers and sellers doing? And so our responsibility as real estate agents is to understand our local markets to say, hey, this is happening. So what we're doing, and I suggest that you do the same thing if you're listening in, is we're running what's called a rolling seven, where we're going back seven days to see what's been active, what's pending, what's sold, just all the information locally that's more quick rather than back two, three months. And it doesn't really matter what the market looked like then, right? So this way we can say, hey, uh, Keith, uh, look, this is how it is locally. It's, uh, we, we've had about 32 listings go active over the seven days and these have gone pending and these have sold. So it, it has slowed down, but you know what? There's less inventory as well. So the prices haven't changed, which is crazy. Right? right. Everybody thinks that the prices are going to change, but there's less on the market. There's actually more buyers right now, at least in our area. And it's hard for them to see homes because we're all in a lockdown. So that's how we're doing. Uh, I think if we have a date of Easter for, for everything to go back to life, whether you agree with it or not, uh, some people will be slow to come back into the market and some will be quicker, but at mm -hmm. least, you're staying in tune with what's happening. You can give that information to them. That's what it's about. Just shutting up, listening to where that conversation goes. Right. Well, well Nick, how about you? I just wanted to add, because even if we quote, go back to normal by Easter, a lot of people are going to feel uncomfortable with going back to normal. So you're still going really? to have to keep in touch with them. You know, you can't, it's not like you can call a seller and be like, Hey, we're back to normal. Let's get your house on the market. Yeah. Hey, Things look like they might be going back to market, uh, going back to normal. How? Let's talk about what you're feeling right now and what your time frame is like, so we can make sure that when you're ready, we can get your house on the market, right? Don't just assume. But 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 now everyone's looking at houses. Get your no. Be a human being and don't try to convince somebody. Just be there for them and understand their worries and concerns. Yeah. That's, that's so I think that's well said. And and Tristan, I want to kind of just highlight something you said earlier. I 100% would agree with you that texting is like such an important part of the communication thing. And, and I use the example that my realtor didn't pick up the phone and call, tend to text my wife and just checking in, right? And seeing how we're doing. I'd also say that if you are gonna do that, you also have to be willing to back it up, right? If you're gonna ask someone, hey, can, is there anything I do for you? And what do you need? You gotta be willing to back it up. You can't just say it. Can I go to the grocery store for you? Actually, yeah, I need, oh, you know what? I can't do that. No, you gotta follow through. <laughs> exactly, right? The grocery and, store, and there's trips there. I can't go there. You know, and, and I was on, I was talking to someone earlier today and they kind of said the analogy, it's like, you know, everyone's kind of round up like a rubber band right now. And, uh, you know, once this passes, to your point, it's not just going to be like everyone 100% is going to go back to normal, but it's going to be an explosion. It's going to be like a catapult of business. And it's like, someone said to me, it's like, Keith, what are you doing right now to, you know, build up your rubber band, right? So that when it right. does go back, that there's gonna be a burst of business, right? And, yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. And I want to bring something up because yesterday we, we had a, a different webinar and I don't know that everybody here caught it but uh, there was a forecast done. Can you see that screen right there with Goldman Sachs GDP forecast? Yeah. All yep. right, so uh, we did a webinar yesterday where they brought in what Goldman Sachs is estimating to happen. And so quarter one, negative six, quarter two, negative 24, which is pretty massive. Uh, this is GDP. And then you see quarter three, it picks back up and then it's still pretty high up there for quarter four. You see that sharp, turn upward. It's not a U, it's not a soft curve. Uh, what's happening is that they're estimating what's going to happen to go straight up or slightly angled, but more straight. Because what's happening, all these people that are holding back on buying because of uncertainty, uh, they still want to buy. I mean, look, look at, look at, here's where we need to segment our CRM. And this is what I wanted to talk about. Yep. When we look at our CRM, this is a perfect time since most of us are home to be able to segment them into 
uh, not only what they do, doctor, nurse, uh, pharmacist, police officer, fire person, fire department, uh, UPS, Amazon, these people are all working right now. And if we're able to have these tags on them so that we're able to separate them, we're able to then reach out to the right people, past clients, sphere, right? That's another tag. And so right now I'd recommend, this is what we've been doing with, with our agents, letting them know, hey, look, you've got an extra two, three, four hours in your day right now. Everything's slowed down. I need you to go back into your CRM and categorize all of your sphere. Where do they work? What do they do? Because now you're able to say, well, uh, Keith, you're a doctor, you're a pediatrician, or you're a doctor and you're working in ICU. Chances are, like the two doctors I know that are friends of mine, they are not going back home. They're actually reaching out to me and saying, Tristan, um, I need a rental or I need to buy right now because I can't go back home and bring this to my family. It's just not, not something I'm willing to risk because I know I'm going to get this virus because I'm in the hospital all day. In the hours I'm working, 14, 15, 16 hours a day. So now it gives me two opportunities. One, uh, be like, uh, is, there, is there anything that my team can do maybe for your family? Because you're not going to be going home. Should we pick up a, a bag of groceries or water? Whatever you need, just let us know. And second, yes, we're able to help you out. Here are some opportunities for you close to your hospital that you can either rent or buy. This is why it's important for us to segment our CRM right now. Yeah, I wanted to add to that, you know, you asked what are people doing with Top Producer right now? And it's, it's interesting how often I hear agents say, you know, Keith, I really need to organize my database. I just don't have time. Well, that, that now that we have a little bit, as you said, you have two to four hours at home. And we're seeing a lot of people now investing in actually organizing their database so in some way you mentioned it, right? Sphere, past client, tagging them by their occupation, their interests, um, using social media. I 100% think like it's like it's one thing to say you have all your contacts in one place. Um, but I would argue that an organized database is a profitable database, right? And, uh, and that's something I've always believed in. Um, and I think that it rings true to what you said. And I think ev everyone is going to organize their database differently because of how that everyone uniquely operates their business. But at the same time, you know, we all would could agree that your past clients in Sphere are kind of like the top of the list when it comes to not just organization, but do you have all their data? Do you have complete contact information? Do you have, you know, some data over your phone and some data in your CRM and it's not all the same and it's just a mix match. It's like right now is the time to set yourself up for success later on. Spend the time 100%. now while you can and set yourself up to be successful um, when this does pass. What I've been saying to agents, because in Michigan where, where, uh, where they have shelter in place, just like California, um, and, you know, we envision it going until April 13th. I mean, that's as of right now. And, you know, what I think, it, it reminds me of the new book by Simon Sinek, Infinite Game. I don't know if you've read it, but it's about, you know, basically thinking long term and how a lot of companies fail because they don't think infinitely. They think uh, in the right now. And, and I can understand that to a point when it comes to realtors, because most realtors don't sell more than five or six homes a year, right? So mm -hmm. it's a very difficult cutthroat, uh, cutthroat industry. Um, and I think what we need to do is uh, we need to think with an infinite game mindset. A lot of them are not thinking that way. A lot of them are not thinking, okay, listen, I've got two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, um, where I could really hunker down and strategize around my business right now. Right. And that two or three weeks, if you do that, it will explode you exponentially once things get back to normal. I promise you dig into your database, dig into your sphere, past clients, make sure they're okay. Check in on them because that's going to set up your pipeline for the next 12 months because now you don't have an excuse. So don't sit there and go, but I got to show homes. I got to show homes. I got to show homes that's thinking in the right now you have no excuse but to think the long term and so go and do it because it will pay off yeah very very good point nick i think what you're seeing most leaders do most okay some are some are just running around scared and panicky uh, but most leaders are taking this opportunity to do two things one is exactly what nick said is make a plan for the long term here with your CRM and with your business in general. And the other one is how to change and adapt right now. So they're doing both. And that's really the key to this. You've got to be doing both. 
one of the things that I recommend to people that don't have uh, an actual CRM where they have everything on an Excel sheet, right? Or they have everything on their phone. And that's the case in some cases, but your phone is your CRM, right? So, you know, valid case for some. I tell them to download an app called uh, my MC Backup, that letter M C Backup. And there's a pro version of this. What it does is, is it exports all of your contacts from your phone into a file that you can then email and then upload it to a CRM. This way, if everybody is on here, you can easily put that into a CRM and then start then categorizing them. Oh, this one's my sphere, this one's a past client, this one's a met, this one's a have not met or whatever. I don't even remember who this person is, uh, which happens on your phone. But uh, MC Backup and MC Backup Pro, obviously you pay for it, right? But it's a, such a valuable tool, so small, amazing app. And uh, it, I didn't discover it. It was Kevin Markarian, who you might know, Keith, uh, as yep, well. I do. Uh, Kevin told me about it a few years back. And ever since then, I tell my whole team, hey, as soon as you join the team, MC Backup, export everybody, throw them onto your CRM, categorize them. Here we go. Right. So, uh, um, yeah. I agree 100%. And I think uh, there's another point there. It's like, if you don't have a CRM yet, there probably isn't a better time to get one implemented because you yeah. probably be able to get it done and get it set up and, and set that as a goal. So if you're sitting here and you're like, I don't have a CRM, I don't really have the tools to help me do this. The time is right now. Right? Yeah, very true. There's a great question here by Lisa Matt or Baral Matt. In addition to personal calls, what is your feeling on a video to my TP sphere that simply check in as well? I think because everyone's checking their texts and a lot more comfortable right now with text over you picking up an actual phone call. What I would recommend is shooting a quick video and sending it out. Uh, I, I think a video, just shooting, you could do one of three things here that I've been telling people to do. One, record it just with your phone. Uh, more generalized one, see no names, uh, where it just says, hey everyone, hope you're doing well, or hey, I hope you're doing well, just checking in to see if, if your family is okay, we're doing fine. Um, just a little quick check-in. The other one is very personal. Be like, hey, Nick, it's Tristan. Hope you're doing well. Uh, obviously, you can't do a ton of those, but if you're doing 10 a day, that's definitely going to work. And then the other option is you can use bomb, bomb right? Um, some people feel that that text is a little less personal than picking up the phone and saying, hey, Nick, it's Tristan type thing. Uh, but those are your options. I think, I think those are your, any other additions to that, guys? No, I was going to say that, like, um, you know, right now, if, if you have a big database, you have a lot of past clients, you know, you sell a decent amount of homes every year, um, you know, it's going to be hard uh, for you and very time consuming to sit down and actually call and text each and every one of those people individually. So what I would do is if you're going to use some sort of automation for it, just make sure it's as personal as possible, Right. Um, sending vid mass video emails to people, the video itself would most likely not be personalized, right? But if you're sending text messages and emails, then you can use their name, right? And it makes it personal. So just be mindful of that uh, because right now a personal touch uh, that's catered to them and, 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 and customized to them is will go much further. Yeah, very true. And if you're going to use something like BombBomb and you put the link into the phone what happens is it also creates that little video and let's say nick's sending me a video it shows uh that little section of nick and it actually has the movement so it could be nick waving or nick talking so people know what it is right yeah kind of like like that there you go yeah well i was gonna add nick i think i think that's a big there's a big point there that um gets missed is make sure your follow-up is personal right and it's kind of like i use kind of the analogy like speak to an audience of one not a hundred Right. And, and, and that's something we're really focused on in top producer is kind of getting away from this mass thing, especially right now when you need, like, you can't do that to your sphere. You can't do that to your past clients. They deserve to be spoken to at, in an individual basis. And, and you don't want to be just a name on your list. Right. Um, and, and I think like for us at top producer, that's like a big focus. It's how do we're trying to build tools and technologies that help agents manage those relationships on a one-to-one -one basis versus in 
mass, if you know what I mean. Uh, and your point in the video, it, you're right. It's going to be less effective if you just do one video and send it out to hundreds of people because it's not personal and it's not relevant to them as a, a human. Right. Very true. So going along the lines of people in your CRM that we should be reaching out to besides your past clients and your sphere, because I know there's only a limited amount of, of these, especially if you're newer, uh, I would also recommend that you look, if you have some online leads, uh, like they're coming in from Google or Facebook, we have the ability to check who's logging on, who's, who's searching for more property, who's not even on. What we're doing is we're focusing on those people that are, that are actively looking. So at the beginning of the day, we reach out to five to 10 past clients sphere. And then we go right into, well, who, who was the last login, right? And what were they searching? Have we contacted them over the last 15 days? Have we not? Because we don't want to over contact them. And then the approach with, with that is a lot different as well. It's not like, hey, what were you looking for type thing? It's more along the lines of, uh, hey, Keith, this is Tristan with Keller Williams. Hope you're doing well, man. Look, I noticed that you went onto our website and are continually searching for homes. I know you're probably not going to do anything right now, but I don't want to spam you either. So can you tell me what areas are you looking for so I can at least send you the right homes for when you want to purchase, if it's a year, two years, three years from now. And so people, people like that a lot more. It's a lot less pushy. And so they open yeah. up and say, yeah, yeah, no problem, Tristan, you're right, I'm not, I'm just looking. But yeah, can you put me in for Malibu? I'm looking for something closer to the beach for about two million or two and a half million. Uh, but that's the approach you should be taking. Uh, any, anything you wanna to add to that, Nick? No, I agree with everything you said. Thank you, thank you, appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> we have a question here. Um, Buster Carter says, what are your thoughts for someone brand new who has just spent the last 30 days contacting a sphere to get started, but has no past clients yet and very small list of actively looking and needs to build that database with new contacts during this time? Anything you guys uh, want to add to that? Yeah. So <clears throat> I would say right now, like the best way to go about this, because I feel like um, there's going to be some agents out there that aren't going to be socially aware of how they should pivot their marketing. So you might want to jump into Facebook and, 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 and work on a message that is, uh, speaks to the current narrative that our country is in, right? Um, whether it be going after sellers or potential buyers and say, you know, listen, in this market, it might be difficult to see, uh, to see homes. Uh, but myself and my team, we have, uh, we have innovative ways to get you into properties virtually and digitally. Um, and so if you're in the market for a home, uh, let's talk about uh, how we can potentially help you um, with the current environment or something along those lines. Um, because right now buyers and sellers are looking for guidance. They're looking for help. Um, they're looking for ways to think outside the box to get their home visibility. And so um, I, I've heard from people that are now, like I've heard from heavy Facebook prospectors, uh, leads are like, they're getting more leads than they ever have. Two reasons. People are home. And two, buyers and sellers now know that they really can't go see homes in a lot of states, right? And so they need alternatives. And most agents can't think outside the box. So be the agent that does and put forward that message about how you can help them uh, and prepare them for when things go back to normal. Very true. And the other thing I would add to that, Buster, is download that app I was telling you about the MC Backup, MC Backup Pro, so that you can download all of your contacts from your phone, just in case you did miss any, and then you can export them into a CRM and then start categorizing them. Uh, Rishon has a question. Keith brought up a good point. We currently have time to learn a CRM. How should we select a CRM? What are the must haves on a CRM? Uh, what should they provide? You guys have any the points? The age on old that? question. The age old <laughs> question. I love yes. how he rephrased it, which is uh, what's the what's the best CRM? Thank you, Rashawn. Appreciate that. I think there are some things that you should be looking for. Number one, is it is it mobile friendly, right? Are you going to be able to pick it up and use it on your phone? Because most of us are on this. Uh, next, are you able to send texts out 
through that CRM, right? Yep. And then for a lot of you, I think if you're starting off something that's not going to be very expensive, but that's manageable month to month, right? Yep. So those are the things I would look at because everyone is reaching out mostly, reaching back out to us mostly by text. I would say those are the things. Um, anything you guys want to add? Keith, anything I missed that you think is important? Yeah, I think um, I think one more too is we have a lot of tools in our toolkit now, right? It is CRMs that integrate well with what you're already using, right? Yeah. So if you have an iPhone or an Android or an iPad or a MacBook, how well does it integrate into kind of your current toolkit and other tools as well, right? True. Because we do run into that often. Like, you know, I know for us, like we're super focused right now on, you know, just syncing everything, right? Being able to have a one-stop shop for syncing everything. And, and uh, I know in the past agents get, they set up a CRM and then they end up having two contact lists now, right? hundred people over here, 150 over here, and it's a mix match. So I also think that's important. Yeah, very true. Nick, there's a question for you. Oh, you got it? Oh yeah, you're muted. Yeah, I already answered it in the in the chat because it was an answer that just could have been, it wasn't like a broad answer for everybody. Perfect, perfect. All right, guys, so in regards to also shifting how you're using your CRM, what are some categories that you guys think are important as we're working on our CRM? So categorization, uh, anything you want to touch on that, Keith? Like uh, besides yeah. buyers, sellers, how else would you categorize your CRM? Yeah, so I've always like uh, came from the mindset of the, you kind of have like a three tiered approach to your categorization, right? Tier one is kind of who are they to you, right? Are they a past client, a buyer, a seller, you know, sphere, friend, family, right? And then two is um, what is their, you know, what is their interest, right? Like I, depending on your market, like uh, for example, often I go to Phoenix and it's, or Scottsdale, I'll be like, okay, you better have a category called golfer. Right. Because if you get like a new listing in like a golf resort or something like that, uh, you want to be able to advertise it to a relevant audience. Right. Or stay in touch with kind of relevant things. So kind of understanding, categorizing people a little bit deeper than who they are um, as people and their interests and what they like. And like another thing for us is like, well, it often it follows up is, well, Keith, how do you find that out? You know, social media is a great way to learn about somebody. I'm sure you guys have learned a lot about your clients uh, through social media. Yeah. And kind of leveraging some of that into, um, you know, into your categorization, I think is important. Um, so I would say group them by who they are to you. Um, I'd group them by their interests. And then to your point, uh, I thought a really good one, which I didn't think about much, is their occupation. It's probably more relevant than ever today is understanding, you know, the impact, especially with COVID-19, the impact that it has to certain people. You know, uh, I use my own story. My brother is uh, a paramedic, right? And he's working full-time treating people with, that are being you know, impacted by this. And uh, his life, what's happening in his life is different than me being locked up in my house right now. Right, so. yeah, 100%. Very true, man, very true. I love, I love how you said that. And I think one of the things that I would also start categorizing is as you're talking to people, like Nick and I interviewed uh, Kimberly Reserve last week, and she's doing online first time home buyer webinars or seminars. Right. And once she's talking to them, because as soon as they sign up, she gives them a call and she gets a better idea of what their time frame is, what their motivation is. So that's definitely one thing that I would categorize or at least create a categorization for that. One of the things that our team does is we categorize our buyers from A, B, C, D, right? Yeah, another one. And a, this way we can always focus in our mornings who do we focus on first? A buyers, obviously. Then we go to B. And then, you know what? It's okay if we don't get to C or D all the time because we're prioritizing. I think that's important. A lot of agents just treat their whole CRM equally. And it's like, well, you're not going to get the most out of it if you're treating it equally. So it's important right now to start categorizing, especially as you're going back to your past clients, sphere, and they say things like, which is happening to us, Hey, you know, I was, I was thinking of doing something this summer, but you know what, with this, we're going to, we're going to have a setback. Now. I don't know. To me, that's somebody who's probably going to be a B and I want to push them up there. Uh, and so pay attention and just also spend the time to create the right scripts for this current uh, situation that we're in. So uh, what I would do is write out your approach, write out the texts, 
that you're going to be sending out and then start changing them as you start getting responses, because I think that's something important as well. Uh, this dialogue that you're using by text or by actual uh, phone call. We have a, a question. Let's see. Bob, Bob, oh, you already answered it. Good, good. All right, good. Cool, guys. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say that's like a really good point, right, is the prioritization. It's like, I think that's what the, your CRM should tell you what to do, right? It's like when you log in today, who should you be talking to? Yeah. Right. And, and cause that's like, I think also like where um, the challenge becomes, if you don't have a CRM, you mentioned, you know, Excel, a lot of agents we work with come from just using Excel. And the problem that they have is they look at their, their Excel spreadsheet. And it's like, where do I begin? Right. I've got, you know, 500 names and it's like, where, where, do, where do I begin? And then what happens is you don't begin. Right. And so it's kind of like, that's kind of like the job of your CRM is to help you kind of build a system that you're using. Right. And, and kind of prioritize where should I focus? You know, if I've got 30 minutes every day to work my database, who, what am I going to do in those 30 minutes? Who am I going to talk to? So I think that's a really, really valid point. Yeah. Diane Plant has a question. What's up, Diane? Uh, she said, I missed that seminar where she's getting these buyers from for, uh, to sign up for the webinar or the seminar. She's running a Facebook ad two weeks prior to the event and she's spending about $300 on, on collecting the data and she gets about, Nick, how many people did she show, showed up this last Saturday? Was it 20 or 25? She had 20 people show up uh, on a Zoom call and she signed four of those buyers and I believe just wrote an offer on a $600,000 home. But I, if you go to our YouTube channel, it's one of our most recent, so you'll find it, you'll find the webinar there. Go to Lab Good Agents on YouTube, you'll see it. Yep, perfect. Uh, Irina. Tristan, you've mentioned the, the ABC buyer categorization. Can you please expand more on categorizing? Yes, definitely. So the way that we do it is we have, let me just take that one off. Good. The way that we do it is like this. A is buyers. This is specifically for buyers. A is buyers that are ready to put in an offer right now or up to three months. And they have a pre-approval letter from a bank. That's A. B, they're ready to put in an offer right now, but they're not pre-approved, right? That's, that's B. There's a big difference, people that have been qualified or not. And then C, people that are looking to put in an offer anywhere between three to six months out. And then D, six months or later is, is what we do. That's, that's do really that for your past clients and friends and family, A, B, C, D, you know, A is people you've worked with who have referred business to you, B, people that you've worked with who haven't but would have asked, and so on and so forth. You can you can label them that way. Yeah, I think that's key too. It's like, uh, who does that? Brian Buffini categorizes. Yeah, Buffini does. does. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So he kind of starts at A plus. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, a look. Plus, whatever. whatever. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I'll Maybe. start it. I'll use, I'll use emojis. I don't care. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you like thumb, thumbs up, thumbs on the middle, right. thumbs down, yeah. whatever you want to do. Man. Um, here, there's some people saying, uh, what's the best CRM still over on the Facebook page? Look, whichever one you use, just use it. Uh, there are some things that we look for. Like I said, texting, uh, simplicity on a mobile device. Um, I don't, I believe, and I don't, Nick, I think he agrees with me. Not every CRM is built equally. So no, you just can't use any CRM. There are some things that you need on a CRM. So yeah. it, it makes me a little angry when people say, well, you know, any CRM, use any CRM. No, I think that's the wrong answer. Um, Nick, how do you feel about it, buddy? So the way I look at it is um, you have to figure out what you need, right? You figure out what you need because what, what CRMs offer, you might not need it, right? So if you need texting, if you need video, if you need email, if you need drip campaigns, if you need tagging, if you know, if you need those things, look for CRMs that have things that you need that will make your life easier. So they're not all created equal and not every CRM is right for every agent, but just figure out how you're going to run your business. And if it has the features to help you do that more effectively. That's it. That's how you choose it. Really? My opinion. Yeah, no, I, that's a really valid point. I've in, to your point, Tristan, I've seen the, just use anyone. I agree with you. You shouldn't just use anyone you need to use the one that's going to actually help you get to your achieve your goal. And by the way, right. the CRM you use isn't the one that's best. That's a bunch of crap. And exactly. that's because if I don't have 
drip campaign capability, if I don't have automation, if I don't have customization in those in that automation, if I don't have the ability to create, um, you know, newsletters or video, if I don't have any of that stuff and I use it, it's not going to be effective for me. So that's a bunch of crap. Yeah. You have to figure out how you run your business and what's going to make your life easier and look for features in CRMs that have that and then you'll choose that way. Right. And by the way, more doesn't mean it's going to be more expensive, just so you know. So, Yeah, very true. And I think here's a, here's a question in regards to that. When you do have a tool that texts, make sure that you also set the expectation. So we're sending out texts from a different phone number. And so people know that that's our, that's our computer line. That's our business line, right? Right. And the more personal we make that approach, the less we're going to get unsubscribe as a response, right? Because if you're just copy pasting it from somewhere else and it sounds like it's not you with no emojis and you use emojis, and guess what? People are going to be like unsubscribe. Of course, it's automated. Right. But the key is to make it as authentic as possible. And once you get people going, once... Keith, let's say I'm texting you and you're like, well, you know, what, how, how is real estate functioning right now? Right. What we're doing is we're sending out this little graphic here. Let me know if you can see it guys. Keith, can you see that? Yeah, I can see it. And I was actually just going to ask you about this and I'm glad you brought this up. So we're sending this out. It's like, you know what? We created this little thing for, for people that are interested, just so you actually know that we're still in business and we're still doing business, but this is how it's working, right? Here are virtual appointments. Uh, virtual property tour offers by email. Look, we're still functioning as a business and here's how we do it. Obviously, we're not sending that out first, right? We're just getting them started and listening. And once it comes up, then we're sending them that. So, so Daniel wants to know, do you explain to clients that you categorize them? No, <laughs> I would not do that. Uh, I have categorized you as, <laughs> as annoying buyer. No, don't. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's not for them to know. It's just for you to keep track. Like, okay, this person said they weren't ready to buy for six months. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put them in the follow up in three months bucket. Yeah. Right. Because whenever they say they're ready to buy, cut it in half. If they right. say they're ready to buy in nine months, follow up in half that time. Right. Yeah. Um, that's just the the method, really. I was gonna also add, just to go back to the discussion about like what CRM you should use. I think there's a couple more points there. One is. What kind of support and service do they offer? Are they going to be there when you need need them, right? Um, because all companies are created differently when it comes to that. Another one too is integration with MLS, right? I think that's a big one. The MLS is a tool that you guys use um, daily, right? Does it work with that? So just a couple more points on the, you know, what serum should you use? Yeah, very true. People are asking about that graphic. I just posted it to Lab Code Agents. Go into Lab Code Agents. It's a Facebook group. If you're not on it, that's which cool. I think most of you are, uh, and. It wasn't a graphic that I created. It was uh, Migdalia created it, and I just I'm just using it uh, like we do with everything in lab codes. People share. So um, let's see any other questions, guys. YouTube channel for for that here. Let me send that over to you as well. Uh, we'll put some things on the chat box there. Just remember, MC backup is something I would highly recommend, just so that you update your your CRM with everyone from your phone. Cause I know I've missed some people in the past until we started using that as well. Uh, anything you guys want to add that I may have missed when it comes to a CRM? Keith? Uh, I'm trying to think we covered it a lot today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we did. For um, me, like the most important features are obviously automation, um, you texting with drip campaigns, um, you know, any sort of, if there's artificial intelligence built in, that's a bonus. It's not a must. Uh, an easy way to send listings, uh, you know, telling me who's the most active on my website and most recently active and how many homes they're looking for. Um, I like video. It's not imperative, but I like it. Uh, you know, that type of stuff. That's the kind of stuff that, that I look for in a CRM. Um, I don't look for much transaction management only because I'm not, like a very analytical person. So I wouldn't be typically using that. Someone else would be, um, as long as it has the, 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 the simple ways to keep in touch with people, then that's what I look for. Yeah. I was just going to say like, really what it comes down to is you have all these people, um, you need the tools to enable you to manage those relationships, right? At the end of the day, that's what this comes down to, whether they're online 
sphere past clients it doesn't really matter you need to communicate with them effectively for sure it's all about communication and i mean it's a it stands for customer um relationship management you're essentially yep. managing your relationships and keeping in touch with people that's what it does everything else is just a bell and whistle um the more you have the better right but like the, the, the real stuff you need to look for is how easy is it, is it for you to, is to keep in touch with people effectively. Exactly. I think that's the, really the big takeaway. Yeah, that's the key, man. And so let me, once we're done here, I'm going to pin that little picture to the top. If you guys want to use it, I'll pin it to the top because I know a few of you are looking for it. I actually had a couple of questions for you guys, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Oh, sure. So um, let's, we've been talking about past clients. How often do you uh, follow up with your past clients? What's your strategy? We try to reach out to them on our end uh, at least six times a year. So we don't want to overwhelm them. We, we do our best to have four events in a year as well. So the reaching out is a little bit easier. It's not along the lines of, hey, Keith, it's Tristan. Just calling to see how your house is doing. Do you have anybody that wants to buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Because I think that's a bunch of garbage. I, I don't say that either, yeah. Yeah, that, we reach out and we say, hey, hey, Keith, it's Tristan. We're having another event in about a month and it's going to be here at this time is it okay if i send you an invite by mail and can you make it do you think and then you're like oh yeah awesome right that's how we approach it a lot more how about you Nick? yeah for me um <clears throat> you know i would have uh, automated uh monthly campaign texting going out to them uh during national holidays uh and uh we would do um pop buys uh we would do we would call them every quarter uh, we had events, you know, that's, that's kind of how uh, we would keep in touch. And again, like Tristan said, we don't, we never asked for business because I think if you're keeping in touch with your database, you don't have to keep reminding them that you're a real estate agent. You know, they are. That's, a, that's a really and, good and point. Also right? on Facebook, friend them on Facebook. Don't friend all of them, but friend ones that you got close with, right? Uh, write them handwritten notes, like, if, you know, and, 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 and remember their birthdays and remember their kids' birthdays and, and things like that. I was just going to ask you, like, do you, do you follow up with them on things like birthdays, anniversaries, you know, and kind of. Yeah, kids' birthdays are events. even more effective than actual birthdays of the, of the, of the clients themselves, you know. Um, yeah. And also, I would send handwritten notes to them. Uh, part of our prospecting for my team would be sitting down and going through Facebook um and seeing what people were doing and the goal was write 10 handwritten cards um when you see someone who had a milestone or even if it was a milestone like for example i remember i sent a card to a past client who posted pictures of her garden um on facebook and she was really proud of them and i was like let me send her a handwritten note telling her that i really loved looking at her garden and it was such a big deal to her, but it's not something you would consider a major milestone. So sometimes when you reach out to them on, on, on those little things, it's got a much bigger impact than happy Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? Cause it shows that you're, that you're paying attention. Yeah, that's key. I think it shows that you're paying attention and that you care. Right. Right. And this person bought and sold $2 million worth of real estate from me in three years. So this stuff pays <laughs> off. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it is the small things that matter. I agree. What about, you know, from, from past clients, um, do you kind of treat your sphere and past clients in a similar manner or do you kind of have a different kind of sequence? Um, uh, no, with my sphere, I'm in, I think just more regular contact because they're friends and family. Right. Um, but with past clients, it's more, it's more systematized. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And one of the things that I know Nick does is we've also automated some of the, seller cards that we're sending we're using am cards yeah. and am cards is so easy you just go on there and then just say well look this is when i want the cards to go out this way it remembers for you and if you did close on any transactions you can always throw them on there and start that process as well so am cards has been really good to us uh, jordan tanner says do you also have an abcd tagging system for sellers uh yeah we do it's uh it starts with people that have referred us two or more in a year is an A, one, right? One, at least one is a B, D, somebody who has been super kind to me and said that they would refer if they came across somebody but never did, that's a C. And D is just somebody who, who really didn't really care at all, but we still have as a past client. That's how we do it. 
Um, Keith, what are some of your other questions? I was just fielding these. Uh, and then I guess, I mean, I think you answered it. You showed that image. I was going to ask you, like, what type of information do you think, you know, realtors should be providing to their database right now, right? Under kind of everything that's going on. Yeah, I think just staying in touch with what's happening, staying close to lab code agents is probably the number one thing I would tell you. You know, stay, stay on because right. we're interviewing everybody that's shifting correctly in this market. And we're also giving you the latest in, in regards to facts and how they're affecting real estate. So I couldn't give you any other advice except please be on lab code agents. That's what, that's the reason we're the largest community on the planet for real estate agents. Yeah, nice. buddy. That's pretty much it, man. <laughs> nice. Keith, anything else you want to add that we may have uh, No, I, no, I think, I think we cover a lot today. I think this is really just a um, really great discussion. Yeah. And guys, if you have any questions in regards to a CRM's a top producer is a great choice, obviously. Keith, Keith is in charge of the whole top producer. Keith thing. invented it. You know what? Keith <laughs> created it and, and made it beautiful and then made it into what it is today. Keith, we're just going to give you all the credit, even if it's not. I, I'll be, I'm, I'm, I'll take some of the credit, but I can't take all of it. So we have a, we have a great team at Top Producer that's been around for a long time. Okay. I know Warren is listening, so we'll give Warren some. Yeah, questions. I know. I was just going to say, Warren, I'm probably going to get a text message from Warren shortly. <laughs> here. like, really? Come on. <laughs> that's funny. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. And then just another thing, look, if, if again, uh, you know, I hope Top Producer is a, a good fit for people. If it is, we have some amazing opportunities. Uh, uh, opportunities for your uh, members of your network as well. So uh, they should reach out to us. Yeah, perfect. I just mentioned lab code agents. So got it, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for being on. Appreciate this. Let's do this again and, and see how this is going in a month. Uh, Keith, thanks. Maybe we can have Warren on next time. Thanks, everybody. If you want to reach out yeah, to us, thanks, everyone. Just hit us up on Facebook on Messenger. Uh, same with Keith. Just find him on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Find me on Facebook. Thanks for having me. Everybody.